Hello, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead here. Well, it is Labor Day of 2019. So today, we're going to, of course, labor. For most people in the United States, Labor Day is just an extra vacation day, a long weekend for them to go out, play at the lake, take a vacation with the family. But if you're like us and you're a homesteader, it's hard enough to get away on vacation, much less waste a long three-day weekend playing, right? So <laughs> what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be spending our Labor Day just clean up around here a little bit. And you know, Labor Day doesn't just signal the beginning of school or uh, the beginning of, you know, a nice, comfortable fall season. No, here in Southeast Michigan, Labor Day signals the beginning of the mad dash to prepare for a hard winter. So that's what we're doing. Today I'm gonna be working on sanding and repainting our back door. Uh, we've got, gonna start getting wood up. We're also gonna be uh, probably tearing out some stuff in the garden, doing our last harvest on uh, zucchini because those plants are just about done. We're also going to be working on uh, just cleaning up a little bit and getting things prepared for winter. So the first task of the morning is to get the back door sanded. This thing honestly hasn't had a coat of paint on it since we put the addition on almost eight years ago. So it's, uh, it's time to get it sanded down and painted. So we're going to hit it with some uh, some 120 grit, some 220, and then get a coat of paint on it. Helps if you plug it in. So we've got it sanded. Now it's time. We're gonna take a shot vac and uh, put it in our blow, in blow configuration. We're gonna blow this thing clean. One quick thing I want to show you guys. If you're ever gonna do any painting and you come across this statement right here, no sanding or priming necessary or needed, it's a lie. You need to sand. You need to prime. You need to scrape off any loose uh, paint or dust. Or you know, it, it's got to be clean. If if you just have flaking paint and you paint over it, it's gonna flake again. All right, priming's all done. Let me take a second and clarify my last statement. When I said that they're lying about not needing to sand or prime, uh, it's kind of misleading to put that right on the front of the can because right on the very back it says surface preparation. Scrape off loose and peeling paint. Dull previously coated surfaces by sanding for maximum performance. Interesting. All right, so this is what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, actually, we got decent. This one zucchini plant here is still kind of thriving, uh, so we might leave that one in here. But further back is where the powdery mildew is kind of taking effect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to rip those ones out and uh, clean up these ones that have uh, a little bit of powdery mildew on them. Get these things out of the garden to the burn pile.
All right, all the old and dying zucchini plants are gone. We pruned out uh, some of the leaves from the yellow squash that have been affected with the powdery mildew. We'll treat the rest of it. Um, ah, bug. Uh, we'll treat the rest of it for powdery mildew uh, from a recipe that our buddy up at Bruce City Gardener uh, posted a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you're curious about that, look, check the description and you'll be able to find his video with how he treats his powdery mildew. Okay, so while I've been working hard, painting, working in the garden, slaving away today, uh, these guys have kind of been playing around a little bit. What are you making, Luke? I have made a big, like, I don't know, Indian hut for our bunnies. Ah, a Native American yurt for the bunnies. Aww. Right? So Once, we've got some four-week-old bunnies here. These guys have been loving on for a few weeks now, and... Uh, giving them some time out of mom's pen in their own yurt. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we try not to cut down any live trees back in our woods. We try to always use deadfall. And I don't know if you can see back here or not, but we've got a lot of deadfall that comes down every year. The main reason is because this area here in our woods retains a lot of water during the spring. And so it kind of kills off the root systems of some of these trees. Most of them are maples and oaks. Um, most of the ash in the area was destroyed by the ash borer in the last 20 years. Um, but what we try to do is uh, cut up the deadfall and then we'll restack it uh, as um, in the previous season and that way it's ready to cut and get up to the house when we really need it So today we're going to focus on getting this stack right here cut up into splittable pieces uh, Get it up to the house and then uh, the one back there that Luke's jumping on I don't know if you can see it or not. There you go that one big that one, big one back there We're gonna work on getting that one uh, logged out and then uh, up on um, a little higher area just in case it rains some more So we do cut most of our firewood down between 8 and 10 inches. We've got a small wood stove in the house. Um, everything that's not the highest quality wood, a little punky, we'll cut a little longer, 12, 16, maybe even 24 inches. And that'll get set into the pile that we'll use for running our maple syrup evaporator next spring. After nine years of being here on the property, it's become painfully obvious that a, a lawn tractor is not the best way to be getting your firewood out of the woods. Unfortunately, you know, it's what we have, or fortunately, I don't have to carry it out by hand. Um, but eventually, we'd like to be able to invest in either a, a larger tractor or even a decent four-wheeler. You know, something that's got enough power to make it up a hill or get through the mud that we get here uh, spring and, and later fall. Uh, so, you know, on a side note, if anybody's got one that you want to, you know, give away or donate or sell really, really cheap, we're here. Just hit me up in the comments. And this is what we call Homestead CrossFit.
Timber. We don't need no stinking gem. We got all of that other pile cut up and up at the house. We've got this pile cut and made so that uh, we're ready to come back, cut it up into usable pieces and take up to the house for the winter. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and scout out into the woods a little bit and uh, try to find some more wood to get stacked up and ready to get put into usable pieces. Well, thanks so much for joining us today as we labor on Labor Day. You know, we have to be ready because winter's gonna come quickly here in Michigan. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, God, God bless. bless.